All right then, water. So here we are. We're on clamp one of our AD plant. This clamp is 40 meters long by 20 meters wide, and it's full to the gunnels with maize, which we've whole cropped and put into the clamp here. Now I'm going to whiz over and show you clamp number two so you can see what it looks like empty. Okay, Waltz, here we are. Clamp number two, nice and pretty much empty. I'm giving you a nice little 360 round so you can see. Same size, 40 meters long, 20 meters wide. Now I'm just going to run up here and show you some of the maize that we've got cut on the clamp, which is going to get fed into the plant for uh, tonight's supper. So here we go. This is the maize. It's all nice and fluffy and light. Oh, smells, smells like cattle farm. <laughs> I'll just show you up right up tight. So what we do with the, uh, the maize when it comes in from the field, it's clamped with a big, heavy JCB uh, load all. It's compacted in. This is hard, hard, hard. Nice and fresh, no discoloration through the seam. You want to keep this maize uh, as tight as possible. Don't let any oxygen get into it. Um, otherwise the oxygen will spoil it. At the moment it's in a pickled state, so that will last two or three years uh, before we need to use it. In actual fact, we use it every year um, because we're growing on the farm about three and a half thousand tons of maize to feed this, this plant. So I'll now show you how the plant works. Just do a little tour, okay? Okay, so standing behind me here, or sitting behind me, I should say, is our feeder. And we feed that up twice a day. We might put about 10 tons in during the day, it's about six or seven tons. Daily ration, about 17 tons of fodder per day. And essentially, you can imagine that sort of like your mouth. You stuff your mouth full of grub. Yeah comes out of the out of that mouth into this machine here which is a little bit like if I can just get the angle on it there we are it falls into this trough here and then it's all good through into this machine here it's a series of cutting blades that mixes slurry in with the maize so it's sort of like your teeth pulverizing the food down, putting saliva into the mix, and um, it's then pushed into the front of this tank, where you can see this little dome here, that's the front. So it's sort of like, you're sitting, imagine this is your stomach, okay? So I'll just go and show the rest of the tank. Okay, so here we are on top of the tank. Uh, the maze has gone in, down that end where you can see the little dome, walk down. There's a lot going on inside of here. This is sort of like your stomach and your intestines in here. Um, so we've got the dome just behind me. You can see we've got a little, little structure here that collects the gas off the front. In the front bit of the tank, it's a lot more uh, CO2 and there's less um, biogas coming out of it. As we move towards the end of the tank, the CO2 starts to disappear and you're getting a, a richer mix of biogas and methane down there. Um, this pipe you can see all along here, this collects the gas from the front there and also from the back of the tank as well. And all the way along we have another pipe that runs on the bottom, that's the thin one there, and it injects methane back into the uh, tank bubbles bubbles it up um, so we don't have any mechanical stirrers on this bit of the tank uh, it's just done by gas gas bubbling basically um, so hopefully not to go wrong although the last word um, and uh, I'll show you now how we keep the whole system warm it's just like a human or a cow it's got to be at about uh, 38 degrees or 37 degrees to uh, Keep um, keep our keep our bugs nice and happy and producing lots of biogas for us. Okay, so here's the stirrer. It's a long, two meter long shaft going into the bag. And on the end of that propeller, 
and slowly stirs the whole of the gestate round the big circle. So kind of you can imagine this bag is sort of like a teacup uh, with a um, gas catcher on top. This is like your spoon slowly stirring that tea down below and um, yeah, producing us the bar gas that we need to run the engines. Okay, so this is the bit of the plant where we're at the back end of the plant essentially and uh, this structure you can see behind me, this gantry, houses our separator which is just up there and that separates the fibre from the liquid element or the slurry element of our digestate. So this is basically like the back end of the whole system. Um, we'll go up and have a look at it working, you can probably hear it whirring away. So yeah, we'll have to climb up the ladder and let's see how we go. that in the tractor and trailer unit down below yeah the old John Deere there which is just below me you just see the cab there uh, and we take that to a field dump and we spread that it's a really good soil improver um, for, for the land just loosens everything up uh, not got a lot of nitrogen or, or elements in there not like sort of chicken or, or pig muck but it's still very useful for the soil to be put back in uh, so yeah, now the um, the liquid element comes down and it gets dropped into that green box just there. And we've got a really big pump, which you can just see behind it there, and it gets pumped up the hill. And we'll go and have a look at where that goes to now. So here's our storage lagoon here, which is getting pretty full. We've had a pretty wet winter uh, we got two of these uh, and this stuff is just fantastic good fertilizer for the soil uh, it really means we can get away from bag nitrogen uh, and reduce our carbon footprint uh, it doesn't smell too bad up here um, the stuff uh, has a little bit of a pong to it but uh, it soon dissipates uh. okay so we're just inside our process building one of our engines here I'll just show you a close-up of the HDMI screen that's producing 124 kilowatts of electricity and it's also producing about 160 kilowatts of hot water which goes into this header structure here and is then fed into a district heating scheme and also heats the tank and the second digester and keeps that at a nice temperature. We've got a boiler there uh, which is a backup in case the engine goes down need to keep eating the, 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 the district heating scheme or uh, the tank in the pool So I'll open up now inside here. Close your ears, it's going to be noisy, really noisy. There we are, there's the generator running away. Uh, it's behind. Close that up. Here I was thinking for a second. Okay. There we are. Let's have a little look. 
look at the engine itself. Take this down. Okay guys, so we're just outside now. I'm gonna have a look at CHP2 and what that's doing. So you might be able to see just down the side there, there's a black pipe where my finger is. That is taking the hot water underground along the side of the, tar of the concrete there and up the hill to our wood chip dryer. And I'll just show you, it goes up in a twin core pipe, um, feeding hot water up and then cool water's coming back. So here's the pipe here, goes along there sends hot water up to our dryer so let's go take a look at our dryer okay so here we are up at the wood chip drying center um just sitting behind me that is clamp one that's the secondary digester there the big game and then that is clamp number two just there the empty one that we saw um but i wanted to take you up here we are now at our new wood chip drying center uh, so we're using the waste heat it comes from our CHPs to dry wood chip, which can then be sold to schools, hostels, uh, hotels, etc. I uh, showed that pipe earlier that's coming out of the ground here. There you see it, and it's popping up here and it's going into the dryer. I'll take you around the other side and just show you how all that works. Uh, you can see me here uh, just beside me. This is the hopper that we fill up. Uh, we can put about, I don't know, six or seven tons in that maybe uh, and we fill that up twice a day and then goes up with this long reverse wall over here and then that is the dryer unit right there so I'm just going to show you across uh, how that dryer is operating um, we've got at the end here this is the heat exchanger it takes that hot water and then uh, blows the air through the chip which is up in the top there there that is all wood chip along there uh, so we don't need a load from the top we just load that box here um, twice a day as I said and the, the wood chip is then sits in there it's dried in batches falls down every every three or four minutes and produces a, a batch of chip um, and here we've got some right below so here's our wood chip which is all dried and ready to go out the market that's got about 25 percent moisture in it um, so it's perfect we've also screened out all the fines from it and i'll just show you this this box here is our fines box so we've got a double auger system that runs every time uh, the discharge runs and i'll just show you inside yeah, there you are oh, there we are there all the fines dropping out that side there's the wood chip out of that side, so I'll climb back down. And then the other thing that we've got here on the site as well is a fine, uh, is an oversized separator. So we put the, uh, the chip in the top. This is before it goes into the dryer system and we screen out the oversized fine. So we'll just have a look at that. Uh, this has now been screened, this chip for oversized. It hasn't been screened out yet for undersized. The undersized is that machine. And we've got a pile here of oversized, which can't go into boilers. Look at this beastie. You don't want that in the boiler. Um, and all of this material is, uh, is oversized. Let's chuck that back through the chipper when the chipper comes again uh, for the next of our processes. But sitting behind me is our, is our relatively new shed for storing the wood chip in. Uh, we'll go and take a look. Here we are. This is all dry. That's all dry chip, ready to be collected. And on this side over here, we've got wet chip. And that's all gotta be screened uh, and uh, for oversized and undersized. And just sitting behind me is our big wood chip bucket. A lot bigger than the bucket we used for feeding up down there. This is a five cube bucket. One down there is three cube. I'll maybe do a video on that and just show you the different sizes. Okay, superb, so there we are. Uh, running the AD plant. Hope you enjoyed watching.